This is two homework problems from 4.6, isolating variables. So we are uh, looking at an equation with multiple variables. And we're not going to be able to actually find out what any of these variables uh, stand for, what their number equivalence is. All we're looking to do is to rewrite this equation so that this x right here is isolated on one side of the equal sign. So when it says uh, solve for x, it will say x equals blah, 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 blah. And whatever's inside of there will have uh, a k on that side and a q on that side and a p and a 2. So it'll be some, oh, not x, <laughs> some k thing, some q thing, some p thing, some 2 thing, some expression with a, a k, a q, a 2, and a p in there because we're going to move all the other variables to the left side of the equation. So how do we do that? Well, we practice the same um, techniques that we do when we solve an equation. We are going to do order of operations in reverse. So to begin with, I have a k that's being multiplied to x and a q that's being subtracted. So if I think about order of operations in reverse, I should get rid of the minus q. Now how do we get rid of that? Well, we need to create an additive inverse pair. I'm going to do the opposite operation of plus q. A minus q and a plus q will equal zero. They'll, they'll cancel each other. And I'll add q to this side in order to maintain balance. A minus q and a plus q are zero. And k times x minus zero is just k times x equals. These are not like terms. They don't have the same variables. So we'll have to write this as 2p plus q. Okay, so now we have our x right here, and we're still trying to isolate it. It's not by itself just yet. So our next step is to get rid of the times k. Well, I'm going to do the inverse of times k, which is divide by k. So I'll divide this side by k using a fraction bar. And I just divided the entire right side. In order to balance that, I'm going to have to divide the entire left side by k as well. So I'm going to divide the entire left side by k, all of it. You don't have to use those parentheses, but imagine that I'm dividing the entire left side by k. That can look like this, the entire left side divided by k. k divided by k, a number divided by itself, is 1. And 1 times x can be written simply as x equals this. That's the answer. I don't even need to rewrite it. I can just sort of do that. <laughs> How's that look for you? Um, x equals 2p plus q divided by k. It doesn't look as pretty as an answer of x equals 5. But we don't know what p equals. We don't know what q equals. We don't know what k equals. So that is the expression that we get. Solve for x x equals 2p plus q divided by k. Now, as we spoke in class, that is algebraically equivalent to x equals 2p over k plus q over k. So if you were working in your homework and you used uh, a different algebra technique that we had discussed in class, you may have gotten this as an answer. That's just fine. Uh, that's all I really have to say about that problem. I did want to address this one as well. So I guess I'll erase this and leave those answers up here. So now we have this, a large fraction, 3b minus 4 over 2 equals c. Sort of looks like this answer, doesn't it? And now, once again, we're going to find out what b equals. We're going to isolate this for b. Again, if you remember our order of operations, parentheses, exponents, multiply and divide from left to right, add and subtract from left to right, and then we included a new one. And the new one that we included in class was fraction bars. Fraction bars. So as we go and uh, solve an equation by performing order of operations in the reverse order, we're going to have to deal with the fraction bar first. You'll notice right now that the entire left side is being divided by 2. And I want to isolate that b. So as I think about order of operations in reverse, I'm going to deal with that fraction bar. 
To get rid of divided by 2, I need the inverse of divided by 2, which is times 2. We also call it the opposite operation. Multiplying the left side by 2 means this entire group, the entire numerator. And I'll multiply this side by 2 as well. 2 times a group divided by 2 leaves us with just the group. Doubling something and then cutting it in half cancels itself. So the 2 divided by 2 cancels. And we now have 3b minus 4 equals the coefficient goes first, the variable goes second, 2c. Now I'm running out of room, so if you'll allow me to rewrite that, I'll just take this entire equation and bring it up here. 3b minus 4 equals 2c. Okay, so here's my variable b. It's not isolated yet. I still need to deal with the minus 4 and the times 3. So I'm going to do order of operations in reverse. I've dealt with the fraction bar. Now I'll deal with the addition subtraction part. I have a minus 4. I will do the opposite operation, plus 4. That will create a zero pair there. I'll add 4 to the other side to maintain balance. Minus 4 and plus 4 create 0. 3b minus 0 is simply 3b equals. Those are unlike terms. I can't add them. 2c plus 4 will just be written 2c plus 4. And now I have 3 times b equals that stuff. Well, if I want to isolate b, I have to do the inverse of times 3, which is divided by 3, opposite operation. And I'll divide the right side by 3 as well. Again, the left side was divided by 3, so the entire right side needs to be divided by 3. Think about that in a group if it helps you. Divide the entire group by 3. It can look like this. I don't need those fraction bars. I just need to remember to divide the entire group by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1, and 1b is the same thing as b equals 2c plus 4 divided by 3. Again, because of our talking class, I need you to understand that that can be written another way as well. The other way that is acceptable is to write b equals 2c over 3 plus 4 over 3. Those are algebraically equivalent to each other. So that was problem 6 and 12 from the homework. I hope that helps you. Please come see me if you have any other questions.